Students, we're going to continue with the reading of the play Browning version, and we're almost about to finish it also. And in this play, as we have discussed, uh, there are two teachers who are there. One is Frank, and the other is Mr. Crocker Harris. Mr. Crocker Harris is not here in the play, but it seems that there is a lot of discussion about him. Right, so the teacher and the student, they're talking about him, they're talking about his behavior, what impression he has on the students, what the other teachers think about him. Okay, right, and uh, Taplo is the student. We get both point of view. We get the point of view of the teacher, that is Frank, telling what other teachers think about Mr. Proctor Harris. We have Taplo, the student, telling that what the students think about the teacher. So what do the teachers think about Mr. Proctor Harris? Yes, that he is very strict. And even though he is a strict teacher, he seems to be quite popular among the students. So the student or the teachers, they are quite envious. Unko lagta hai ki agar wo itna popular hai in spite of being so strict, the reason, right? So they want to be like him. He's a senior teacher, he's quite experienced, he's leaving the school. But even on the last day, he has not broken any rule and regulation. That means he's a very devoted, he's a very dutiful person, okay? And because he's very strict, he does not interact much with the teachers and the students. So people think that he likes, you know, giving pain, maybe giving a lot of homework because we see here how Taplo is here even on the last day, he's doing his work, which was left so that he can get his remove, so that he can get his result, okay? But here it is that people think he is like that, but the student himself says that, no, Mr. Crocker Harris is not a sadist. Right, he might be all shriveled up. He does not like it that uh, students should like him, the teachers should like him, but he is not such a person that he will hurt anybody intentionally just because he, he gets a pleasure out of it. So, who's a sadist? A person who gets happiness from giving pain, hurting others. That person is a sadist. Mr. Crocker Harris is not. Right, so these are the things that we have learned. What about the teaching method, right? So here, uh, Taplo has decided that in the next term, or uh, I will, or in the next grade, I will not opt for classical literature. I will prefer opting for science because he feels that, uh, yes, he notices that the teacher here, Frank is a young teacher. His method, his approach towards teaching is different. And he does not like the classical approach which Mr. Crocker Harris has, that you just have to keep on writing the lines of those Greek plays, and he thinks that no, they can be a met better method of teaching literature. Okay, right, so what has happened is that, so Taplo is there, extra work he's done, he's waiting for Mr. Crocker Harris to turn up, he has not turned up at all. And in the meanwhile, there's a science teacher, a young teacher, he's talking to Taplo, and what does uh, Taplo do? He imitates Mr. Crocker Harris. First, Frank is quite happy, quite amused. Here they could look how nicely he's imitating perfectly. But then he realizes that he is wrong. He should not encourage the student. So he asks him to say those lines again. But then he tells him, you, you're getting it wrong. Mr. Crocker Harris does not speak like that. Okay. And so he, uh, of course, immediately realizes his mistake that I should not encourage the student to talk about the teacher, right? And of course, even in the absence of the teacher, it is important that, yes, the teacher should talk respectfully, not in a humorous or not in a lighthearted manner about the teacher, okay? Clear? Yes. And uh, what is the incident that happened with uh, Taplo when he thought that, yes, he will try to impress uh, Mr. Crocker Harris, but as it is, Mr. Crocker Harris does not want to be popular. He does not want to impress others. And he doesn't want that others should like him. What was the incident that happened? Yes, so Mr. Crocker Harris, he cracked one of his classical books in the class and nobody laughed. But that though, 
out of uh, good manners, you know, like, okay, the teacher has made an effort to make this joke. So he laughed and he was the only one laughing. And Mr. Crocker Harris said that, uh, that was, since you have understood the joke, so why don't you make an effort or why don't you explain the joke to the rest of the class? And to the shock and surprise of uh, Taplo, he was unable to understand uh, anything which the teacher had said. Okay, right. So he's telling that Mr. Proctor Harris does not like to be liked. It makes him shrivel up even more. What is shrivel up? Dry up. Apne aapko aur introverts bana lete hain aur apne aapko, you know, like he just stay in his own uh, world. Okay, right. Yes, so you laughed, Taplo, you laughed at my little joke. I noticed. I must confess that I am pleased that the advance your Latin has made since you so readily have understood what the rest of the form did not. You see, I'm happy you have made a lot of progress. Perhaps now you would be good enough to explain it to them so that they too can share your pleasure. The door upright is pushed open and Millie Crocker Harris enters. She is a thin woman in her late thirties, rather more smartly dressed than the general run of school master's wives. She's wearing a cape and carries a shopping basket. She closes the door and then stands by the screen watching Taplo and Frank. It is a few seconds before they notice her. So here, while all this discussion has been going on, they have been talking about Mr. Crocker Harris, talking about how, what he does in the class. And it seems at that moment, Mrs. Millie Crocker Harris, right? She enters, she is his wife and uh, right, so she is uh, there, you know, like uh, it seems as if she's been a little, uh, what uh, time standing over there. And both of them are worried that she must have heard their conversation that how we were talking about Mr. Crocker Harris. Come along, Taplo, moves slowly above the desk. Do not be so selfish as to keep a good joke to yourself. Tell the others. He breaks off suddenly noticing me. Oh, Lord. So both of them have been discussing. In fact, it's time for Frank has become a little casual and he's telling who. Oh, He's telling Taplo to share the joke. What was it? So tell me how uh, Mr. Crocker Harris cracked the joke in the class. Frank turns quickly and seems infinitely relieved at seeing Millie. The door opens and he's shocked. You know that maybe Mr. Crocker Harris has come, but it was Millie. Oh, hello. Without expression, hello. She comes down to the sideboard and puts a basket on it moving up to left of Frank, whispering frantically. Do you think she heard? So Taplo is there, really worried. Do you think uh, she has heard what we were uh, talking about? And if she goes and tells, where the result here, isn't it? She was standing there quite a time. I think she did. She was standing there quite a time. So Minnie is there taking off her cape. She's kept her basket. She's come inside the room. Both of them are guessing me. What is she going to tell now? If she did and she tells him, there goes my remove. Nonsense, he crosses to the fireplace. Millie takes the basket from the sideboard, moves above the table and puts the basket on it. Millie, waiting for my husband? Taplo, moving down left of the table. Uh, yes, he's at the Broussards and might be there quite a time if I were you. I go. So he's busy, he's out somewhere. And if I were you, I would leave. Taplo Duffy. He said most particularly I was to come. Well, why don't you run away for a quarter of an hour and come back? She unpacks some things from the basket. Supposing he gets here before me, I'll take the blame. She takes a prescription. I tell you what, you can do a job for him. Take this pres prescription to the chemist and get it made up. All right, Mrs. Crocker Harris. He crosses towards the door upright. So Mrs. Crocker uh, Harris is there and it seems that she's heard the conversation between Frank and Taplo and she tells Taplo, you can go. That my husband is busy, he might not be here, might not come. But he says that I, I can't leave. What if he comes and I'm not here? I will not get my removed. So she says, okay, you can go for some time. And she gave him 
some work to do. What did she give him? She gave him a prescription to go to the chemist. Ki jao, get these medicines and all for me. And uh, yes, so it's an excuse for you to go outside. And uh, yes, so because he also wanted to go out, play golf, and he thought that my whole day has been wasted. Okay. So Mrs. Crocker Harris sends Taplo away. So uh, this is uh, an extract from the play, the Browning version. And Robert Browning, he has made a version or his own of the Greek play, Skylars by Agamemnon. So it's a Greek tragedy. And here he has made a modern version of it. He's talking about this play, his own version that he has made it. So that is why the title Browning version. Okay. So basically here, what the extract we have, as I told you, it's a dialogue between the teacher and the student, right? Okay, any doubts, any questions? No, you don't have any doubts. Let us just go through these questions. Comment on the attitude shown by Taplo towards Crocker Harris. What is the attitude shown by Taplo towards Crocker Harris? What is he like? Is he angry? Is he resentful? Is he critical? Is attitude hai? respectful? Is it respectful? Yeah, can I get some answers, please? Can I get the answers? Yes, Amish, Ananya, Harshika, Megha, Smriti, Isha, can I have the answers, please? So, what is the attitude? Is it respectful? Yes, it is critical as well as yeah, respectful because uh, uh, what uh, Taplo he himself, you know, he says that in spite of uh, Mr. Crocker Harris being so strict, he still has a soft corner for him. He likes the teacher, right? So he does talk about him that uh, see he is uh, very strict. Uh, he's not like other masters. He does not declare the result. Till the last day, he does not tell anybody's marks, he does not tell anything at all. And yes, he makes us do extra work also. He does not like the way the literature is taught, right? So it is they're showing also that uh, he imitates also, right? It is there, you know, sometimes he gets casual, sometimes he's critical also, right? But at the end of the day, he says that in spite of his strictness, Mr. Crocker Harris is still liked by the students. Okay, so yes, so it is respectful. It is a little casual also at time, and uh, you know, like yeah, uh, gets a little carried away when he imitates him, and it is critical. Does Frank seem to encourage Taplow's comments on Crocker Harris? Frank is who is Frank? Frank is a science teacher. Do you think Frank seems Encourage the what the, the comments about Mr. Crocker Harris. Does he seem to encourage the comments? Yes. What does Frank do? Yeah, he wants to know more. He wants to know what do students think about the teacher? What is it about his behavior? What is it that he does in class? How does he talk? What kind of work does he do? And how does he, you know, like, uh, yeah, uh, create such a reputation? So he is a little, uh, yes, he was listening. He was laughing at Tableau, very nice. He, he was he was encouraging him because he wanted to learn more about Mr. Crocker Harris. He wanted more information, what students think about him. And he was a little envious himself. reputation He is quite popular. He's so strict, even he is strict. But even then, yeah, the students like him. So he is there. There is admiration also. There is envy. Okay. And he is encouraging Tableau because he wants more information about Mr. Crocker Harris. What do you gather about Crocker Harris from the play? So it seems as if the whole play is about Mr. Crocker Harris. So we're talking about Mr. Crocker Harris here. 
that uh, what uh, he does and how he teaches, how he behaves, what is his reaction towards the students in the class and uh, how, you know, like he does not like to be liked. All these we have discussed, right? So you can write the character sketch of Mr. Crocker Harris. You can know. Now you need to get uh, writing also. Now discuss with your partners, talking about teachers among friends. How do you talk about teachers? Yes, very nice. Yes, good answer, Isha, absolutely correct. Yes. What is the manner? How do you talk about teachers among friends? Discuss teachers. Yes, we get casual. We describe the way of teaching. We describe what happens in the classroom. It could be a funny incident. It could be, yes, uh, something very memorable. It could be a, a wow moment that happened in the class, isn't it? Right? So how we, of course, we definitely talk about teachers. There's no doubt about it. But the way you talk about teachers, that is very, very important. Right? So even if in the absence of teachers, just like here, Taplow and Frank, let's not get carried away. Let us maintain that decency, that decorum. Okay? The manner you adopt when you talk about a teacher to other teachers. Yeah, so what is it? You, you get a little casual. You, you take out all your uh, what anger and everything. Oh God, that teacher is there, very strict. Gives a lot of homework. You can't excuse anything and um, right? Escape from that teacher anyway. So yes, when you talk about a teacher to a teacher. So if you have to discuss any teacher with me or you want to talk about me to any teacher. So what manner would you do? Would you like to? Of course you would like to, right? But it also depends on the other teachers that how they encourage. Do they encourage your conversation? Do they listen to you? Do they encourage you to speak about the teachers? That is very, very important, isn't it, right? So once again, when you talk about teachers with other teachers also, remember that, yeah, you have to be respectful. And yes, not get carried away, not cross your limits, fine? It's very important here in every stage of life, you know, right? So when we do, and when we are there with our teachers, right? So your nursery teachers were there and your primary schooling was there and those were there with you to your, uh, your secondary and your senior secondary. So every teacher has a role to play in your life, okay? Just like you have grown, the teachers have also grown along with you. So when you talk about teachers, let's be very, very, you know, particular about this aspect, okay? Right? Our teachers give you homework, tests, they're not the most likable creatures. They're not the most likable persons, I would say. But nowadays, yeah, considering the pandemic, I think you should say a big thank you to your teachers. They've helped you continue with your learning, with your teaching, and they've made sure that, yes, you've come to the next class. Now it's entirely up to you how much efforts you put, isn't it? Right? So teacher is just a guide, a mentor. Someone who just telling you what to do, giving you a direction. Rest you have to follow. Reading plays is more interesting than studying science. How many of you agree with this? The reading plays is more interesting than studying science. Yes, can I have a response to this question? How many of you feel that reading plays is more important, is more interesting? We've read two plays, we read Mother's Day, right? We have read a Browning version in this uh, last two weeks. We have done two plays. Now, if you had to do a science chapter, you were studying about, uh, say, states, and you're talking about uh, what other things that you have to do in science, isn't it, right? Your forces, whatever. What is more interesting? Of course, I, I can make a guess because uh, you know, I have the commerce section. So obviously, people uh, will find uh, anything more interesting in science, right? That is why here, but uh, some people, they believe that science is much more interesting. What are plays about? Can you tell me? How is uh, science, of course, is something that is happening in the world around you? Yes, you can apply science. You, you uh, experience science in every day of your life, isn't it? 
about science, about the applications, about working, about uh, so many things that happen, isn't it? Right? So if we feel that you know, science is something that is uh, of a daily use, something that's very practical, right? But what about plays? What do plays deal with? We read one play that is Mother's Day. Yes, very nice, very nice, Isha. Absolutely. Science is about facts. It's about, we, we know these things are happening and all these uh, experiences that we have, we're getting a logical explanation to it, right? But what about plays? Plays are also about your experience. They're about, uh, you know, things that uh, have happened about an incident, right? You talk about Mother's Day. It's about reflection on human behavior. It's about society. So in just one incident here, in one scene, we come across with so much of information. So yes, so how many of you, yeah, come on, let me uh, see. How many of you feel that uh, science is uh, better or plays are better? Yes, girl, very nice. Yeah, very good answer you have given me. And uh, yes, so he's also saying that science is about experiments, it's about facts. And you do all these experiments, you have a lot of, uh, you know, like your observations and your conclusions here. And plays, they teach you a message about life. What a message does Browning version give us? What message does this play teach us? Can you tell me? Yes? Can you tell me what message this play gives you? You should talk about your teachers. Teachers should talk about their students. What is it? They have this to be a change in the method of teaching, right? The way we teach science is different. The way you do languages, that is different. The way you study plays, that is different. Yes. So teaching the subject which you are learning, the way it is taught also matters a lot. And once again, it depends on the teacher also. Sometimes, you know, you find uh, subjects which are not interesting, but depending on the teacher, they can be made very, very interactive, they can be made very interesting, okay? Right, so yes, the message here is, it's about the, right, understanding teachers and, uh, yes, so plays are understood by everyone, plays through acting, and uh, yes, uh, through the dialogues, uh, we are able to convey that message and everybody can understand it. Very good point. Science, not everybody is able to understand uh, beyond a certain level. You know, we, we are not able to get into all those formulas and all those things here. So, right. Very well said that everybody is able, can understand what the play is trying to say, what the message. We could understand Mother's Day. Yes, we could understand about the Brown version also. What is the message? Yes, once again, Garv has given me a very good answer that, yeah, it's about respecting. And both of us, we, we should understand. When I talk about my students, I, I should also not, uh, you know, like, yeah, maybe criticize them too much or try not to give an opinion about things I'm not very sure of. Similarly, when students talk about teachers, they should also talk in, yeah, we should both understand our limits. As I've told you many, many times, there's a very thin line that defines the distance or the relationship between the student and teacher. So we both have to respect that. We have to respect the limits that we have. Isn't it right? Yes, so right and students, they should respect. So everyone has their own way of teaching. Very nice, very good, yeah. And uh, right, so students should not be judged and teachers should also not be judged. Okay, now we're talking about uh, what we're judging here. 